For Inside Carolina, I'm Taylor Vipolis, and this is the Insider Rundown, where I'll cover what I'm hearing when it comes to UNC football. There is a lot to like when it comes to this Tar Heel offense. For starters, Drake May is leading the way as one of the best players at his position. UNC's trio of tight ends are as good as anybody else's in the conference. You have options at running back and the additions of Tez Walker pending his appeal, and Nate McCollum has the receiver room looking the strongest it's been since probably 2015. With all that being said, weeks into camp, it's become apparent from those in the know that UNC's offensive line is the notable weakness for UNC on that side of the ball. Despite the return of four starters and having a collective 137 career starts on that unit, UNC's offensive line is failing to perform at the expected level of new offensive line coach Randy Clements. To counter this challenge, UNC has been moving the pocket and leveraging the mobility and pocket awareness of its star quarterback. Shifting the pocket and utilizing rollouts through design plays could mitigate the deficiencies of the offensive line by capitalizing on May's ability to make throws on the move. This approach not only reduces the time May spends directly behind the line, but also puts him in positions to exploit defensive gaps and create opportunities for both passing and rushing plays. That'll be something to watch for as UNC is going to have to get creative to overcome an offensive line that is realistically below average to average at best. One player that has accentuated those problems up front for Carolina's O-line has been senior Des Evans, who has caught everybody's attention in training camp. One source told me that after watching a practice, he was at May's feet on nearly every rep. There's been no signs that he's coming off an injury, and the staff is hopeful that this is finally the season it clicks for him, as Evans has faced difficulties in translating his recruiting height into on-field production. Standing at that imposing size with a rare combination of size and speed, Evans possesses the physical attributes necessary to disrupt plays and command attention from opposing offenses, so it's jarring to see him with only one career sack to his name. To help with the underwhelming defensive line as a whole, Mac Brown brought in Ted Monachino this offseason, and I've heard from multiple people that no one has benefited more from Monachino's arrival than Evans. Monachino's proven track record mentoring some of the NFL's best pass rushers has been a welcomed addition to Chapel Hill, and the belief is that fans will see a revitalized and more formidable defensive front under his guidance. Behind that initial wave of pressure, you can sharpie in the name Cedric Gray and Power Eccles at linebacker, with those two playing 95 and 90% of snaps last year respectively. Defensive coordinator Gene Chizik will again lean heavily on those two to carry a bulk of the snaps, but the staff has begun to grow more confident in early enrollee Amari Campbell. Campbell has impressed with his fluidity at the position and has shown the ability to trigger well downhill with some physicality. He'd be the third guy to play if Gray or Eccles came out. Ideally, a fourth option would emerge that the coaches feel as good about. That hasn't transpired yet, and honestly, it might not with how much Gray and Eccles are expected to play. We'll see how that and more plays out as we inch closer to week one. In the meantime, stay tuned to Inside Carolina for all the latest happenings from our training camp coverage.